people were right for a certain amount of time, but are now incorrect. We're here to judge people again, and it's not just because we have too much sap and too much switch sports in the hopper, and we need a little variety coming out on YouTube. It's because I've decided that today we should fight. It's that simple. You make me look at my Reddit, 90 comments asking me why I'm not playing Rogue Legacy 2. I look at this Reddit and I channel that energy that could have been destructive into something productive, making fun of other people. It's perfect. Okay, does the screen region look good? I think it does. Maybe the text is a little small, but let me read it to you. Am I the asshole for keeping track when I was told by older people that I would understand things when I was older and emailing them examples of how they're wrong now that I'm adult? What an incredible place to start. <clears throat> I've kept track of most of the people who told me you'll understand when you grow up. After getting my degree, I started emailing a lot of them with counterexamples and research. Things like being punished for being bullied and or drawing on notes, some religious intolerance, not getting paid for working when I should have, and a few others. My old principal literally emailed back to me with you're older, but you're still an immature asshole, so I decided to ask here. Um... World's, world's sanest person just dropped. I, look, it depends. Like, obviously, first off, how good did that feel for the principal? Obviously, when there is a student that is, like, under your jurisdiction, you have to be nice to them as, as much as possible. But as soon as they leave the confines of the school grounds, you can say what you really feel. He must, that must have been the greatest email he ever got in his life when he opened it up and then was like, I can finally, thanks for letting me know your email address so I can freaking go off on you. Um, this is, does it make you an asshole? I mean, I don't know if you're really like that big of an asshole. Hello, Daniel. Sorry for the swears, by the way. We're doing some React court. This is somebody who uh, they're asking if they're the asshole because... Their entire life, they kept track of people who would tell them they would understand when they're older. And then when they became an adult, they emailed them back with counterexamples. Uh, I don't know, 5 to 20 years after the fact, depending on their age. This is not... I mean, I don't think it's that much of asshole behavior, but it is a little bit psychotic. I can hold a grudge, but to hold a grudge to somebody from like you know, your teenage years into adulthood and then basically try to get them, try to own them afterwards is, is just, it, it's an unhealthy fixation at the very least. They're in positions of power over others, particularly children. The particular wrongs were for the most part harmful. In the case of the principal, I was bullied and punished for being bullied multiple times then expelled it was in a houston suburb school where fighting is extremely common however even when i was hit i wouldn't fight back they even ended up with a recorded video that ended up on youtube showing i didn't do anything except drop to the ground and cover my head the video is what got me expelled for being involved in a physical confrontation this seems like one of those things you shouldn't be e e emailing your principal and saying like um Here's all the times you were wrong. You should be taking like the school district to, to court and suing them for all they're worth. Now that I know you're in the United States of America, you should hire a lawyer and give the lawyer the YouTube link and then tell them that you got expelled for it and sue for emotional damages. Your, your only problem is having tipped off the principle that the lawsuit was coming. It followed me to college. Also, I'm Jewish, and I was told that complaining about being harassed was something I would have to deal with and to suck it up by a teacher at the school. This is the, the case writes itself. Your teacher, I don't know if I'd go so far as to call it a hate crime, but she definitely said something uh, pretty unjustifiably insensitive to you. You need to, you need to take these fools for all they're worth. In regards to the payment issue, it was my first job and I didn't realize they had to pay me if I still worked after they closed the doors. When I brought it up, they said they couldn't afford it and answered above as the principal did to justify their reasoning. This is one of those things, this is like, um, it's an everybody sucks here and I'm sorry that happened to you genuinely situation. You should not be emailing these people with your long held grudges, you know, um, when, when you hold a grudge, you know, you, you damage yourself more than you damage your, your, the object of your uh, malevolence. 
That being said, it seems like he went through some nasty stuff. I like this more when, and this always happens when we do React Court. Um, I liked this more when I just thought that they were a little bit kooky. Uh, but instead, it, like maybe just a little bit petty. But this actually seems like just a terrible situation. So um, we're going to move on. I don't know. I would say everybody sucks here. You still shouldn't be emailing them this. But also, I think uh, that, that, I, that shouldn't have happened to you in the first place. Am I the asshole for not refunding clients because of my weight gain? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta make sure I got the right screen region here. Your clients? <clears throat> I'm a classical belly dancer. I didn't I didn't know you could be a classical belly dancer. Like like Chopin or Mozart or or what? Tchaikovsky, Korsky Korsky Rimsikov. I also offer classes. When COVID hit, I emailed all my booking and I offered to refund their deposit when it became clear that we were in for the long haul. Some of my clients chose not to take back their deposit and they postponed or modified the booking, switched to a virtual performance. Okay. I um this is not meant to be super judgmental. It's just an observation. Who is watching a virtual belly dance? Virtual therapy? Sure. Virtual meetings, virtual in-class learning. But can you imagine just sitting there like with your, with your family watching a virtual... I guess for classes, like a virtual belly dance class. But... Uh, I mean, it, it's the same camera angle of me when I played Switch Sports Bowling, right? One of the bookings was for a wedding. I usually can audition or simply provide a sample video. The clients wanted to postpone until they were able to gather with hundreds of people, which was a few weeks ago. I did audition. I confirmed that they wanted to keep the same routine, and they said yes. Since then, I'd gained some weight. For context, I'm 5'4". Pre-COVID, I weighed about 130 pounds. I now weigh about 160 pounds. My weight does not affect my performance. I was able to perform the full choreography and routine. Weight does not matter specifically in belly dancing. I'm active. I was not out of breath or sweating profusely, and I was professional. However, after I had issued the invoice, I received an email from the bride and groom saying I didn't look the same as what I did in the audition, and I didn't fit the aesthetic of what they were going for. For that reason, they don't want to pay. Um, it's the easiest, like, not the asshole of all time. You didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Like, let's just ignore, let, let's pretend this was not a situation where um, obviously it's more sensitive because it's about some person's body. But like, you can't, if, you're, if you go to like pick up a car, let's say you signed a con you're about to sign a contract that you're going to buy a car. If they say, hey, come in and check it out. We finally got it shipped from uh, Grand Rapids. And then it's like, you know, it, it's a different paint job than you thought it was going to be, or you wanted to get the ST and they're giving you the SE, or like, you know, one of the rims is a little scuffed. It's up to you to look at the car and then go, this is not what I ordered. I am not going to take possession of this until it is what I ordered. So we're going to like, just call, call this whole thing off. You don't get to sign, drive the car home and then be like, Oh, now that I have the car, I don't want to actually make the payments on it. it, it look, isn't it, it's not a great metaphor. It's a clumsy metaphor. All I'm trying, I'm not trying to say that people are property. All I'm trying to say is if you're unhappy with the service that you're going to get and it's apparent, you don't take possession of, you don't have the service happen and then just go, I don't want to pay for the thing that we already got. You got to stop it before it happens. I work at a bank and people do this with cars. Well, yeah, people do a lot of things. They like, you know, murder other people. But this is, am I the asshole court? And I think that makes you the asshole. You have to refuse the service before the services are rendered. That's where the insanity comes in. Yeah, murderers are the asshole. I just don't understand the... I don't understand the counter argument here. Usually there's like some division. I don't understand how they could not be the asshole. Also, who cares? Like, if you'll forgive the, the rawness of the verbiage, 
Who cares if your belly dancers put on some weight? It's not like... That's not what it's for, right? <laughs> I, I thought it was just like, wow, look at the way she's rolling her belly. Rolling her body like Jennifer. She's the star of my liquid dreams. I mean, it's called a belly dance. I sort of don't get... Yeah, is it a wedding or a bachelor party? I just don't understand. Check the percentages. So I can see it. It says not the asshole 60%, which is basically for the Dan viewers, that's like a super majority on, on am I the asshole. Usually it's like, you know, 30, 30, 30, 10. It's like 30% not the asshole, 30% are the asshole, 30% everybody sucks, and then 10% is like, you should never be allowed to perform a business service again because you've betrayed them. Uh, with you. When you sign a contract, you have to adhere to everything by the strict letter of the law, according to my father, who I respect but don't love. Anyway, this one, is. I'm, here's my thing. Obviously not the asshole. This one's not that interesting. I think you just encountered a client from hell. Am I the asshole for having a lights out wedding? It's an essay. It has five edits. And sorry, it has four edits and an amendment. Okay. okay. Now I was I go off on the OP and then I'm like, I read paragraph two. Being raised by blind parents wasn't without its challenges. How am I supposed to go in on this. We'll read it anyway, okay? Because I'm not scared. I can't call you an asshole. I will say this post is labeled asshole, though, so I'm interested to see where we go with this. I, 27F, am the daughter of the most amazing parents that ever did a maze. No, they are not perfect, but they've literally done everything they could in their lives to make sure I was happy to the best of their ability. They are also both blind. Being raised by blind parents wasn't without its challenges, but we always found solutions or compromises. One thing that was always a point of contention was clothing and fashion. My parents have found their own way of being fashionable, and rather than appearance, it's fabric or feel. This has resulted in them having a very eclectic sense of fashion, but honestly, I love it. I admit that I hated it as a teenager, as I had no say over my own, wo my own wardrobe purchases, but I realized that I did prefer to feel comfortable in my clothes over how I looked in them. Took many stupid expensive clothing purchases to realize this, but I digress. Nothing is mismatched anymore, but I have a super cozy wardrobe. With the wedding planning in full swing, my FDH asked me, my FDH. Isn't this the Magic the Gathering format? Father is not fat, dumb husband. Future, dear husband? When did that get added into the, into the acronym OEUVRE? Future, dear husband? Future, doting husband? All right. I'm going in. Asked me if I was going to be okay with the photos. He did not mean this maliciously. It just didn't occur to him that I was originally planning to buy them clothing to wear. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought, wouldn't a fabric wedding be special? Essentially, the whole wedding will be in the dark. I was inspired by that restaurant in the movie About Time. I realized I don't want to dress my parents. I want them to be comfortable and to enjoy our wedding the way they experience it. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I wanted to experience the special day as they would too. My future dear husband, honest to God, does not care. In his mind, the moment I said yes, I became his wife, open parentheses, I love him. To avoid accidents, we're going to use glow stick lighting and everyone will be provided glow bracelet and necklaces. <laughs> they light up enough to not crash into each other, but not so much. <laughs> I, it's just like, it's just a lot, man. I, and I don't, I get, I don't want this to be like, to seem insensitive, but how many guests you got coming to this, man? You got 
200 guests come into this so that your parents don't have to put like a suit on? I don't understand. Like it just seems, I, if I were the parents, I would be like overly, I would be uncomfortable because I'm like overly accommodated. You know, like when you go over to somebody's house and they're like, what do you want for dinner? And you're like, oh, whatever you have is fine. And they're like, well, we should really just choose. We can also go out to the grocery store and get whatever you want. I'll pay for it. Don't worry. And then do you have any dietary restrictions? They're like, I would just, just let me vibe. I'm just trying to vibe, not to mention like it's your special day. This just seems like a, like this is a lot to do just for, I mean, two people that are very special to you, don't get me wrong, but like. It's, it, it would make me uncomfortable if I was the mom or the dad, I think. Just my two cents. We're also hiring event staff with night vision for this equipment. Night vision. You got Sam Fisher, man in the open bar. There isn't. That's amazing. I don't believe that this is real, but it's kind of amazing. Like, also, you can just do that. I guess if you had a, a wedding planner, you could be like, hey, just talk to, like, some catering companies and, like, add in a few grand for night vision, I guess, or something. When we announced, most of the family was supportive. My family goes without saying. Fiance's family is iffy. His brother loves the idea and is going to come in a velvet suit a la Austin Powers. Honestly, it's his parents that are really against it. We had a huge fight over it when they argued it's not fair to punish the guests because my parents are blind. I don't believe that they said that. I don't believe this is real. Do I believe they might have said something that was like, I would like to see my son on his wedding day? I believe they could have said something like that. Did they say it's not fair to punish the, the other guests? I would be surprised. Now, I don't know them. And one of their kids is going dressed as Austin Powers, so maybe that's an indictment of their parenting to begin with. The reason I think may be the asshole, the reason I think I may be the asshole is because part of his family that is siding with his parents are vowing not to boycott if we don't have lights. My, Not to boycott? My husband just thinks it's their loss and that his parents will attend even if begrudgingly but I know it would hurt his relationship with them and I don't want that it's not that this is a hill I'm willing to die on but it's my wedding I don't know why that's in quotation marks and this would be really special to me in quote oh in quotations because my husband has told me he'd marry me in the in a Walmart if that's what I wanted he just wants to marry me In quotations, because my husband has told me he'd marry me in the in a Walmart if that's what I wanted. He just wants to marry me. That's cute. That's good for you guys. I'm happy. Edit. I feel like I keep seeing these points get brought up, so I'd like to address them. Edit. To all the haters who say I'm crazy and should die, I just want to say a few things. We hired a wedding planner whose literal job it is to make sure this event runs smoothly and safely. Is she like ex-CIA or something? Because I feel like logistically this is even... It's like a normal wedding, but the, like all the difficulty that goes into a normal wedding, but then with like a little Nathan for you veneer on top of it. They are literally being paid to factor in any contingency to ensure the safest experience. There will literally be staff wearing night vision goggles monitoring every table to ensure everyone's safety. That makes me feel less safe, to be honest with you. The fact that I will be observed by like 15 people who are the only people who can observe what's happening at the event makes me feel a lot less safe, quite frankly. I feel like I'm I'm in like Guantanamo Bay or something. Like I'm I don't wish to be observed. There were 200 invites sent out and 121 have RSVP'd. Yes, each table is set to seat six. So at this time, we're paying for 20 extra hands to cover the tables for 121 guests. This isn't counting our table or the exits. But like, I'm just cons and, and uh, forgive me for asking these questions. So you. 
this, there's seating. So this is the reception. This is not the ceremony. This is the reception. So they're bringing you your food and you're eating. But there's also like speeches. So like when it's your turn to give a speech, someone's going to step out of the abyss and like grab your arm and be like, you know, oh, Mr. Letourneau, it's time for the best man speech. Please let me guide you to the, to the pulpit. And then you're going to be up there giving a speech in the dark. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't seem sensible to me. Also, I feel like my eyes would hurt when I left this, the ceremony. Oh, I, sorry, I forgot about the glow sticks. But still, how do you know where like the staircases are and stuff like that? The glow necklaces? Oh, oh, never mind. Here we go. I've heard a lot of people imply that glow bracelets and glow necklaces won't be enough. Having been to many nightclubs and raves in my teens and early 20s, I can promise you that 121 wearing these is enough to see with. And the staff will manage the rest concerning tripping hazards and directions. Okay, so like literally it's just all of your complaints mean nothing because in my head I've already decided that it's going to work. A lot of the you're the asshole comments are making ve very valid points. That being said, I'm also making a list of strong points to go over with my planner tomorrow. But for those people whose only argument is they wouldn't be comfortable not being able to see, that's literally the point. You're not supposed to see. If someone came in a giant furry sully from Monsters, Inc., not the pilot, dumbass, I'd be thrilled when I ran into them. The wedding isn't going to be focused on visually enjoying the experience. It's about hearing, smelling, tasting, and feeling it. Can I tell you something? Tasting, sure. I, I do enjoy going to a wedding and tasting the food. I don't want to smell the wedding. I don't want to touch the wedding. Here is also a pretty good one. But really, I'm going to see the wedding predominantly. I just... It's not that this isn't like an interesting idea for like a, like a fundraiser or something like that. But like... Why is it merging with your wedding, I guess, is the thing that is the, that is kind of, like, why does this have to be involved in the wedding? It just doesn't make sense to me. Because of the parents? Yeah, but like, I mean, I just don't, I guess I just think that's an invalid reason. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them like what causes they should or they shouldn't take up. I feel like if the parents were like renewing their vows, it would make sense and be cool to be like, guess what? We're going to do like a, a lights out wedding. And then you'd be like, oh, we went to this lights out wedding and it was neat. It was this experience where the people that were getting married were blind and they wanted us to like have a the ability to understand that. This just seems like... Like it's not your parents' day. You know? Like maybe it's something you could do for like their... It's like your 50th anniversary. You rent out the Legion and you do a lights out party for them or something like that. But it's like it's your... It's your wedding. They want to bond with their parents? They're 27 years old. They could just... It's just weird, you know? It's weird to me. Like, if, if Kate and I do, like, a bigger ceremony at some point, if we renew our vows, I hope my parents will be there. My mom, she's a, a plant-based eater. She doesn't eat any cooking oils. She doesn't eat any dairy. I'm having steak with blue cheese on it. There will be a, a Caesar salad served on the side. And it's not that I want to, like, screw over my mom. It's my day. It was our day. I'm signing the damn check. When you and... You know how many meals I had that uh, you and dad picked out for, like, the first 18 years of my life? I'm picking this one. It's your day. You, on your wedding, you should do what you want. And I think that she's doing what she wants. 
but it scares me, I guess. Okay, sorry. Amendment to number four. Please know when I said that's the point, I didn't mean the point to be uncomfortable, and I can see how it came across that way. I want to apologize for that. That being said, what I meant is it's the point to attend with limited visibility. When people tell me they're uncomfortable with not being able to see, it sounds the same to me as if someone said they're uncomfortable, be, uncomfortable being naked at a mandatory nudist beach. If you're attending, you're attending knowing you will be naked, or in this case, nearly blind. So making a complaint about not being able to see, knowing it's a light out event, lights out event doesn't make any sense to me. They're not, they're complaining because they don't want it to be a lights out event. What are you taught? What are you saying? What do you mean it doesn't make sense to you? They're like, well, the thing is X and they're saying they don't like X. So I don't get it. I'm, I'm out of here, man. She's saying don't come. Well, like that wouldn't be, I wouldn't even respond to the RSVP, to be honest with you, if, if this ended up in my mailbox. We're scrolling past some, some terrible ones. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Am I the ass? This is one, because we some people were like 50-50. On the last couple, let's get everybody back on the same page. Am I the asshole for making fun of my brother-in-law after he lost a shit ton of money investing in cryptocurrency? Now we can all be on the same page again. We can laugh at an all my apes gone or something. So my sister-in-law's husband. This just for simplification in the future, is also known as a brother-in-law. He's a bit of a braggart and gets off on boasting about his money and the things he's bought with said money. Me and my... Wait, no, is this your... Your sister-in-law's husband? Your sister-in-law's husband? Your brother? Your brother-in-law, your brother? Your sister-in-law? His husband? It's his wife's, sis his wife's sister's husband. Okay, that's his brother-in-law. Yeah, yeah, we're okay. All right, we're okay. we figured it out. Me and my wife aren't exactly struggling, but we're not as well off as them. Every time we visit them, he'll pull me aside to show off whatever new gadget he bought. Whenever we go out to dinner with them, he'll insist on paying in the most condescending way possible. He'll also try to give me financial advice, which is just annoying. My wife doesn't like him, but she puts up with it because she's very close to her sister. I'm kind of close to my wife, so I put up with it for her. So we got into crypto and shortly after, NFTs. I work in finance and have learned a decent amount about crypto. I'm not some expert, but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see how it's a Ponzi scheme. When he brought me this advice, we argued on it. He accused me of not wanting to give my wife the life she deserves. That seems like a rational sort of uh, economic argument. He also said that he was going to make his family millionaires and called me naive for not wanting to join in. I don't know if y'all have been watching the news lately, but a lot of cryptos aren't doing so hot. We hosted them for dinner. It was awkward. There was some tension. I couldn't tell why. In a period of silence, I asked him, so are you all millionaires yet? In that moment, my wife's sister put her head down into her hands and was in tears in seconds. Her husband explained, this is not true. This is, this is not safe for work writing, but that's okay. In that moment... She was in tears in seconds. Her husband explained he bet money he couldn't afford to lose on cryptos that crashed. He lost a shit ton of money and said unless they figure something out, they won't be able to stay in their house or pay for their two daughters' preschools. I was immediately met with a glare from him and my wife. When they left, my wife accused me of being in a dick measuring contest against him and said I took it too far. This is not real. This is not a real story. This, yeah, this is r slash that happened. On, I wish it was real, but it's not real. If you're going to make a fake story, could you at least make it insane? He took me aside and told me that he put all of his savings uh, into this cryptocurrency, which has crashed 99% over the last six days, but told me not to tell 
my wife. Of course, we're married. So the first thing I did was tell my wife and she told my sister and now he's threatening to beat me up. Am I the asshole? Like that's a story that I could be like, you know what? I could sort of believe it. But this one is just it's it's just too mundane. Am I the asshole for telling my partner that her kid has a father and I'm not a cash cow for deadbeat parents? This has been deleted. Okay, well. <laughs> How about this one? Am I the asshole for ruining Easter by agreeing with a self-righteous little brat that I am a devil worshiper? I Before I even load this story up, I love when adults get tilted by kids. Especially, like, if it's a 14-year-old, sure. Like, you go off on them, ruin Easter or whatever. But if they're, like, nine, I just, I just gotta know. I gotta know more about you, that you let a, a kid get inside your head like that. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. Am I the asshole for ruining Easter by agreeing with the self-righteous little brat that I am a devil worshiper? A little background, I'm 28 and I live in a big city and yard space for entertaining is a luxury. I inherited 10 acres of land from my grandfather, which he bought in the 70s. It's a dream location for an Easter egg hunt and 90% of family events are held on my property. There's two houses on the property, my house that I built two years ago and my grandfather's house, which has remained untouched since he died. I am an atheist and you will not catch me in a church, but I have no problem celebrating religious holidays like Easter if there's food involved. Well, that's big of you. My dad and his wife are more active in church than most of the family. My family was getting together for Easter, and my dad asked me as a favor to let my wife invite her church friends for an egg hunt after lunch. I reluctantly agreed. The pious kid who I thought at the time was 12 to 13 from his size, but later I found out he is nine. Let's go, baby. I knew it. Yes, I got rattled by a nine-year-old, but in my defense, he looked like he was 12, okay? When I yelled at him and let him ruin my family gathering, I thought he was 12, which would have been way more sensible. He asked me why I never go to church. Keep in mind, I never met this kid in my life, but somehow I assumed that a nine-year-old is just a small person who has an adult's wisdom inside of their brain and will never ask anything that crosses the line. Uh... So I can only assume he has heard something about me from my stepmom. All I said was church was not my thing. He asked why not. I said a different viewpoint, and he wanted to know what religion I was. I said I do not belong to any religion, and I consider myself an atheist. He asked what the, is that, and I said I do not believe in a higher power. From that conversation, he told me I was a devil worshiper. I was like, WTF? I told him I sure was, and in the house he would see my animal sacrifices mounted on the wall. Literally, the way this is written is that this nine-year-old kid made a joke, like he bantered, and then the dude went full fucking psycho just trying to scare him. It literally sounds like the kid was just trying to like get you to giggle a little bit or play around in conversation, and you're like, yeah, well, I uh, drink goat's blood. And you can find it inside of my house. You have to go to the bathroom. He asked what... The, okay, hold on. We went further. He would see my animal sacrifices mounted on the wall. I told him everyone thinks I got those deer from hunting, but they really are sacrifices. This kid lost his you-know-what. He ran screaming to his mom. I was a devil worshiper and sacrificed animals. He was crying with snot running down his face. Okay, congrats, big man. You owned him. At first, my dad and stepmom did not get what the kid was saying because I don't hunt. The deer mounted on the walls belonged to my grandfather. My dad asked, why does this kid think you are a devil worshiper killed deer? I told him the kid was nosy and made assumptions that I agreed with. I got yelled at by this kid's parents. They are yelling at me red face and I cannot stop laughing, telling me about my prosperity and that I'm evil. I told them to go take their superstitious bullshit off my property. I am catching so much hell, which is crazy to me because this just seems like a normal situation. Drama Lama stepmom is saying I have humiliated her in front of the entire church and she will never forgive me. I told her I don't care and reminded her that I only tolerate her. My dad wrote a public apology on his Facebook on my behalf. There was some backlash from the family and he deleted it. 
I feel a family meeting coming on, which I won't subject myself to. Literally, so from about the age of 20 onwards, if you don't get along, and I mean like you're cool with your family, but you don't really have that much relatability with them, there's a little challenge called be nice and normal for four hours every six months. You have taken it to a difficulty degree impossible. For, for reasons that I can't even understand. All you had to do was not be a weirdo around like the nine-year-old kid. I don't mean like a, a scary weirdo. I just mean like way too intense. Like the, it, it really sounds like the kid was just joking around. And then you got offended that there was a nine-year-old Christian... And, and you sought to own him in the marketplace of ideas. I just don't understand. Like when he said, are you a devil worshiper? Why wouldn't you just say, you know, no, I don't believe in the devil either. Just like maintain like an even keel. I don't, I just don't get it. I wonder what the tone of the conversation was. He's nine. Nine. He's a nine year I'm not saying a nine year old kid can't rankle you a little bit, but like he's nine. It's not possible for a nine year old kid to ruin Thanksgiving. Even if he does something that ruins Thanksgiving, it's the response of the adults around him that chooses how the tone of this event is going to go down. It's his parents. Like maybe you can rag on his parents a little bit, but I also don't think he did anything. Like it doesn't sound like this kid did anything wrong. It is okay, okay, fine. Your house, your rules. But like, host Easter without making it like a weird soapbox. Twenty twenty two challenge. Don't get me wrong. It's funny. I think this is one where I gotta like, I gotta go look at the at the original post. This is, dude, Reddit is full of people that are psychotic. Not the asshole, and to be honest, my favorite part is when you reminded your stepmom you only tolerate her. It's your family. Like, instead of just constantly trying to, like, own the people closest to you in the marketplace of ideas, you could literally just be like, I'm sorry, and then never see them again. Like, I don't understand why... Like, what is wrong with you? 900 people, no, sorry, 9,000 people upvoted it. I've altered the deal. Pray I don't alter it further. OP, probably 3.1 thousand upvotes. So true, dude. Hippity hoppity, get off my property. OP, apparently. So freaking true now that I get it. Okay. Not the asshole and ignore every single asshole on here saying that you are. The kid should have been taught better. Not your problem. You have more patience than I do. There's not a snowball's chance in hell. I would have ag agreed to allow a bunch of religious people onto my property and the moment any of them attempted to spout their religious nonsense off, they would have been escorted off my property. He's nine! Sir, we received a 911 call. Um saying, uh, oh my God, on this man's property. This is, cr you would have been escorted off my property. If I had people that loved me that came to my house, which I don't own for a barbecue, which I don't have, and they said something that even slightly rankled me because everything's about me and I'm the main character, I would escort my own father and mother off of my property. All right, it's not my PC. This is a blender, okay? If you hear that and I'm not playing PUBG, it's a blender. If we are playing PUBG, then it's, then it's my PC. Is, is it that the kid should have been taught better or did somebody put the kid up to asking in the hopes of shaming OP back to the church? To me, that is even worse. But it's not, that's not what happened. So you could just not, like that, it did, that's, he's nine. He's a nine-year-old kid. 
he asked he the kid asked do you go to church because this whole world probably revolves around the church you think it's a, a a false flag operation from jesus christ himself to me that is even worse i'm not above cutting off family if they would push religion on me I'm a firm believer that having religion is like having a penis. It's fine to have one, but no one wants to see it or talk about it without the other person bringing it up. My brother in Christ, you, you just brought it up. I don't... It, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, oh, it's, Mikey, thank you. Man, I feel like everything blew up based on a kid that you could have ignored or told politely to go pans, pound sand. Given that I think everybody sucks here, I feel like someone ends up not sucking. But here I think it's everyone, including you. Even if you get labeled an asshole here, I bet you'll be asked to host events a lot less often. Downside, you didn't do anything to help improve an already negative stereotype of atheists, which you easily could have done. At least, look, I don't agree with necessarily everything that he wrote here, but at least this person lives in the real world. Where people have, you know, slight differences in opinion, but can get together for three hours to eat delicious hamburgers because that's more important. Real world individual. I agree with your general assessment, but let's be honest. One convo with a random stranger isn't going to do squat for kids with a parents like his. You don't, yeah, it, it, it doesn't have to. You're never going to see this kid again as long as you live. Oh, let's go. A little superfood smoothie, berry blue, blueberry creamsicle smoothie featuring, hold on, spirulina. Yeah, delicious. It's delicious. Yeah. It's fantastic. It's got courgettes in it. It's got zucchini in it. delicious I feel revitalized I'm I'm losing it man show this smoothie it's in like a it's in a container you can't see it. well there you go I was about to win a League of React Court game dominating them mid lane in the marketplace of ideas when my wife brought me a smoothie, not asked for, but much appreciated. Hey, Zary, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Every, I, I also feel the need like to go one step further, and I might lose some of the plus twos I had on my side for this. So many people are ready to go in and be like, it's on the parents for not teaching their kids not to ask inappropriate questions. I feel like if you're a nine-year-old kid and your entire social life is based around like where your parents take you and they take you to church, it's kind of like a pretty normal question for a little kid to ask someone that's different is like, why don't you go to church? That's not an inappropriate question in the slightest. That's, it's honestly, if you were in that bubble, that's kind of an astute question to ask because you're trying to get a different person's viewpoint that maybe could teach you something. I don't understand the idea that like, oh, the parents really screwed up raising this child. Like he didn't, the kid didn't do anything wrong. Okay, he called him a devil worshiper. But this guy's an atheist, you don't get offended by that. <laughs> don't, don't pretend to be offended to act like you're the victim in a situation where the other party is nine. It's pathetic. Not the asshole, and no more Easter egg hunts. Based, so much more time for Path of Exile. You're the asshole, but it was funny. Not the asshole, this is the best story I've ever heard. Jesus-loving kids gotta learn not everyone believes in him. I'm, I'm so sick of these kids coming to my favorite restaurant, Red Robin, and making noise, having so much fun with themselves, with, and they don't even pay for the meals. I've gotta pay for the meals. All these kids going to see the Pixar movies at 1 p.m. on a Saturday, making noise in the theater. <clears throat> I 
This is crazy, man. I'm scared by how many people agree with me. That's usually a sign that I'm in the wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to find some good ones. What time is it? 1230. Okay, no problem. Am I the asshole for not wanting my husband to work from home? I believe that this will be good. They're eating too many damn bottomless fries. Okay. Some background. I worked minimum wage jobs all through his schooling in the agreement that down the road he would get a higher paying job and I could live my housewife dreams of spending my days baking, gardening, and cooking delicious meals. Look, you're all, you need to, I, you got to speak to your audience. You got to read the room. This is not the way you should write this sentence on Reddit. Reddit predominantly 15 to 45 year old men who look like me, militant atheists like myself. When you write a sentence that basically could be misinterpreted as I worked minimum wage jobs for a little bit and then my husband is going to do all the work while I sit at home and do nothing except for all the domestic stuff, which is actually still very hard, as I've found out since we've had a baby. This is, you've already put yourself so far on the back foot. Hello, Josh, by the way. Hello. Recently, he got a job he really wanted, but he was nervous because they weren't willing to pay him much. I was in full support because I want him to work for a company he feels good about and am content to live a low-cost life. We were both under the impression he would go into the office most days for the first six months and then two days a week after that. On his first day, they sent him home after three hours with all his equipment and told him he could work completely from home. I'm struggling because we live in a tiny studio apartment and now I have to tiptoe while he's in virtual meetings all day. I was excited to have the house to myself and now I feel like the rug has been pulled from under me, but I know it's a real privilege to not have to work, so I'm conflicted. I've expressed to him that I need space for my sanity, but he says it's selfish to ask him to commute and work in an empty building for several days a week. This is a weird one for me, okay? I don't think anybody involved in this situation is an asshole. And that doesn't happen too much on Reddit. I think it's okay for her to be annoyed that in a small space, she doesn't get to feel like she's actually at home because basically her husband is also there working, so she has to change her activities. I think that's a reasonable thing to be frustrated about. Now, you can be frustrated about something, but still you know, be like, this isn't the best part of my life, but everything else is still good and I'm content. If she was like, if, if she is pushing him, and maybe there's some inference here in this paragraph, if, there's, if she's like, please go into the office, then maybe she's an asshole if he is happier at home. Um, but I, don't, I think this is a no assholes here, man. I actually don't think this is as spicy as I thought it would be. I thought this was going to be like, I realized I hate my husband. So instead, I'm going to, um, I want him to go back into the office to save our marriage. Instead, she's like, you know, this dude's in virtual meetings eight hours a day. So I don't really feel like I'm at home, but I recognize that I have a good life anyway. Could need a bigger place. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I think this is a no assholes here. This strikes me as a... A VNS. This strikes me as a very normal situation. Okay, this one's deleted, but man, I wish that it wasn't because um, am I the asshole for telling a girl to stop pretending to be a mermaid? Am I the asshole for telling my sperm donated nephew he's not part of our family? What? I don't even, I, I, I just want to know more. I'm not making a judgment yet. I just want to know how this happened. I have an older brother who I've been estranged with for a long time. Not even sure where, if he lives at this point, don't really care. Apparently when he was in his mid-twenties, he sold some sperm to a clinic for easy cash. We know this because his spawn. Why? Like, just, just why write it like that? Like, I was so, I was going along for the journey with you. And then you, you self-reported as like an anti-natalist. 
Why don't you just say his son? Spawn. What? It's just so condescending. Tra recently tracked my family down after taking one of those DNA tests. He was unable to contact my brother, no shock there, but found me on LinkedIn, reached out, and we met for lunch. Based on his messages, originally I thought my brother knocked someone up and abandoned her, but at lunch I found out he was conceived using donor sperm. He does look a lot like my brother did when we were younger, but based on his origination, I don't feel any sort of familial bond, if I'm being honest. I have my own family that I care about deeply, and I don't really need much more. All of that strikes me as fair, quite frankly. Maybe written a little condescendingly, but, but fair, I guess. I guess Jake is feeling an identity crisis, not knowing where he came from, so he wanted to meet. When I met him, I told him that, by the way, I would not have done the lunch meeting. That is one of those messages I would have left on read, I think. But maybe that makes me even more of an asshole. But like, I feel like if I'm putting myself in the shoes of the author here... What did you expect to gain from the meeting? Because you already called him Spawn instead of like a human being. Or I could have maybe like, well, let's have a phone call before we go out to lunch or something like that. Like, you don't have to start with like a meeting where he like knows your face. And like, you know, maybe follow you back to your house or something like that. It's just, it's the same guy who blew up that nine-year-old. No, not yet. I guess Jake is feeling as an identity crisis from not knowing where he came from. When I met him, I told him I would, though I feel weird about it. I did feel like I should at least meet him to share the limited info I know about family medical history. Okay, sure. I told him, but it was clear he wanted more. He asked about my weekend plans. I told him I was on Easter duty and hosting an event with friends and family. What? At my park that my grandfather uh, gave to me in the inheritance? There's two houses on it? Is it, it maybe is the same guy. He asked if he could come meet my kids and some other relatives. I told him, sorry, it's too weird. I have no ethical qualms about sperm donation or any of that. But I feel like it makes a difference that he was created that way. So I told him no and that I don't want to pursue another meeting with him. You just get yourself into trouble the more you talk. I think that's a universal truth. The more... If you can say something in one sentence and not elaborate until asked, you're going to be a lot better off than if you say that second sentence. I don't have any ethical concerns with like sperm donation, IVF, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You don't need to put the second part, which is that it makes too much of a difference that you were created that way so you're not part of my family. He seemed upset but left with no incident. It's another like thing you commonly see on Reddit, right? Which is that like anytime somebody is upset, you expect it to be a public freakout moment. He didn't kill me, but he was emotionally affected by this moment. Then lately, he's reached out again, telling me I'm treating him like shit when we're technically family. I told him no again. He wouldn't stop pushing, so I told him I don't consider him family, and I'm blocking him. And he reached out. If he reached out again, I would speak to my attorney. My wife thinks I was too harsh, but agrees we shouldn't maintain contact. It'd be weird to have him meet our kids. My friend, however, thinks I'm being kind of an a-hole because Jake is clearly having an identity crisis. Honestly, I, after everything we've been through, I don't think he's really like an asshole. I think he's... I think he kind of sucks. But I, it, it, within the specific situation of, of like of the, the encapsulated issue on this one, I don't think he's the asshole for being, you know, cold called by his brother's child who was fathered by his, via sperm donation and being like, nice lunch, but I don't really want you in my life. I don't think that's an issue. He's, he just sounds like a guy. Everything he's writing makes him sound like kind of a jerk, but that doesn't make him like a, a bad dude in this. It doesn't make him wrong in this specific situation. He called him a spawn? Yeah, but I think he's like not wrong, you know? <laughs> like, I, sure, I don't think he's treating him as a, a, a person... Like, with the respect that a person should be treated with. 
But I also don't think the meat of the issue is incorrect. You know what I mean? Like, I think he's being not, I think he's being fair, but not nice. I don't think that makes him the asshole. I think he's being harsh, but fair. Like when that guy told his stepmom he only, uh, he only merely tolerates her. I'm being honest. I think this is a nobody sucks here. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, nobody sucks here. I can also understand why, you know, Jake would be going through an identity crisis and we would be trying to meet up with uh, some people that maybe could give him an anchor point where he could reverse engineer part of his identity. He's clearly rich, though. What does that have to do with anything? Why would he not help Jake? Because he's got his own freaking problems. He doesn't even know who this kid is. Jake's uh, basically a 23-year-old stranger. It's not this guy's responsibility to be like, I'm going to fix him. He's, he's got his own stuff, man. The sprinklers are broken. Got to get the winter tires taken off the car. He's got his own kids, maybe. Like, you know, people are busy. I can fix him. He's his uncle, though. Like, kind of. <laughs> like, genetically speaking, yeah. But, like, doesn't Jake have, like, some other uncles that are, like, from the family that he was raised from in the first place via the sperm donation? Like, where's the, where's the family that he was with in the first place for like the last 23 years that raised him from, from zero to, to 23. See, now you're filling in your head cannon. You're like, maybe they're all dead. Well, we don't know that. Maybe they're actually the nicest people of all time, but Jake uh, sold all of their appliances and fence them to get drugs to uh, buy guns. And now he's trying to find another person to do the exact same scheme with. Maybe they're all dead and Jake killed them. He doesn't know that because he's a stranger, which is why, you know, you don't... I mean, you're like, you have sympathy, but at the same time, you're like, well, I hope that works out for you. Keep your head up, kid. Plus, if he doesn't like his brother, Jake genetically is 50% his brother. So, fifty percent chance he's not gonna like this kid either. Also, people keep saying he threatened to sue him. He didn't threaten to sue him. He said he would speak to his attorney about a restraining order. That's probably too far. <laughs> but he's not gonna sue him. He's just gonna say, like, he's like, hey, please, I don't wanna meet up anymore. And then if the if the if Jake keeps going, let's meet up. Then he's like, okay, I'm going to legally get this in writing that you have to stay 200 meters away from me. He's not going to sue him. But not the asshole? I don't know, Chad. I don't think you live in the real world on this one. I think he could have been nicer, but I also don't think he has any obligation to, like, integrate this person into his life. Which everybody at all times is always busy. Because your busyness does not change with the amount of work you're doing. It, it scales with the perception of how much work you're already doing. So you're, you, your barometer for how much you're doing is proportional to how much you're already doing. I don't think that makes any sense. But what I'm trying to say is you're going to make excuses for why this guy should help someone who's only like very slightly... Uh, you know, related to him. I don't mean genetically, but in terms of like how the fact that they've lived their life. But, but why you can't do the same thing, even though you probably have a similar situation in your life right now. You got cousins who are going through some stuff. You could give them a phone call. Oh, but that is a different situation. I'm busy. This guy is rich because he has an attorney that he can email. I think he was doing a fair thing in a not nice way.
That's, that's my verdict. You don't have to agree with it. That's the beauty of, of React Court. So he's an asshole? I don't think an asshole is, is just not being nice. I mean, now we're getting more into like the dictionary definition of what an asshole is. Like, I think you could be an asshole and be nice. Here's your fentanyl, honey. Like, I think that's a, a nice asshole right there. I think you got to look at this situation itself and uh, like, it's are they off base with the way that they're tackling the situation? And I don't think they were off base. I think, honestly, I think this guy's just from Boston. And you're the asshole if you're calling him mean for having a Bostonian sort of dialect. When he meets his like kids, he's probably like, hey, you fucking idiots. I'm here to pick you up from fucking school. You fucking, uh, why don't you get it? Last one in the Prius is Derek Jeter. You know, like that's just how they talk. I'm from Boston, and he, I think he's an asshole. Do you mean that, like, because if you're actually from Boston, that would mean, like, you guys would be great friends, right? That's just how we talk. I hate these, like, rug pulls, man. Am I the asshole for refusing to walk my stepdaughter down the aisle? It's always like, am I the asshole for doing asshole thing? And then the body of the text is like, she shot me in the leg last year. Okay, how about, I, I love these everybody sucks. Those are the best. Am I the asshole for skipping family togethers because my girlfriend doesn't feel welcome? Now, this is the kind of post I love because the headline screams, not the asshole. But the reaction so far says that they're the asshole. That's, I love, that's a rug push. They have pushed a rug underneath me to, to cushion me and my entertainment. The rare rug push. Harder to do. Yeah, like, screw that. You know, you ever see, like, a waiter, like, take the tablecloth off, but all the dishes stay on? I would love to see them do it in reverse. If they could just push the tablecloth on without knocking any of the dishes over. That would be impressive, man. My family and I used to be really close. I used to be close with my parents as well as my three older sisters because we all live close by. My parents enjoyed setting up either Saturday or Sunday, depending on everyone's schedule, as a day just for my siblings and I to go over to the parents' house, hang out, and have a meal. This is very nice. I brought my girlfriend, let's call her Morgan, over to one of these back in October. Let's call her Morgan. Let's, let's dig into that a little bit. You didn't have to pick a name. You could have just said my girlfriend. But you chose to pick a name. Why'd you choose Morgan? It's interesting. Of all the names you could have chosen. Poss possible that her name really is Morgan. Or possible. Who knows? Hello. Hello. Because it is Morgan. You think it's a Dexter Morgan situation? Maybe he was watching the Dexter remake on Showtime. We got to watch the Dexter remake? Yeah. I don't think I've, I've seen Dexter since 2008. I'm sure it is good. I mean, I, I also heard it was good, to be fair. That is a good point. But you know what is also good? Two-hour season finale of Survivor next Wednesday. She's not excited. Yeah, I'll be in my circuit. Probably true. That is probably true. Pog, though. <clears throat> so Morgan was going to one of these back in October. It was their first time meeting her. I'd been dating her since late July. 
It seemed a perfect opportunity for her to meet them in a casual environment. Well, they ended up just grilling her the more they learned about her. Not grilling her in like a yelling, screaming, like grilling sort of manner, but doing this passive aggressive, I'm going to talk down to you, but in a calm tone. Okay. In the past, I've dated girls who were quiet and studious types. All of them went to college. Some got master's degrees and my family hugely values education. My dad is a doctor. Two sisters are lawyers. My other sister's a doctor. I have a master's. Then my, my parents loved my exes. Okay. Morgan's a bit different. She didn't like school. She admits her grades didn't matter. She was more focused on the social aspects of high school, doing the whole where's the party Friday, I got so drunk last weekend, what outfit am I going to wear to school thing. She didn't go to college. She was more focused on the party, which for my family was strikes one, two, and three. At the family gathering in October, once they figured out she didn't go to college, that's when they jumped on and made her feel inadequate about it. It seemed like everything they said to her was a variation of we're above you, you're a moron, we're going to let you know that. For example, they said things like, I just can't imagine not caring about school. Weren't you worried about your future? Those classes aren't hard unless you don't try. They got her in one-on-one -on -one conversations when I wasn't around and said those things to her. Oh, no, it's you. <laughs> what do you mean it's me? Because you just, uh, you just do your homework, then you get A in school. Yeah, but I would never say that to a person's face. I would just let it serve as the underpinning of my academic philosophy, which is that there's really no excuse to not get anything under like at least an A minus in middle school. Like uh, you're in class eight hours a day anyway. Like literally just write the answers on the piece of paper that they gave you and hand it in. I don't know if you were like cool in high school, maybe you had something better to do and you're like, okay, I'm going to get like some C's. Because these are the best years of my life. But like when you're in middle school, come on. It very much upset her that they would rip her to shreds over her education and her job. She waitresses. It pissed me off hearing her tell me what they said. She decided she wasn't going to be attending any more family stuff and strongly encouraged me to as well. So I haven't seen them since October. My family thinks I'm the asshole because to them, I'm being manipulated to hate them by a pretty girl with a nice smile and no goals. I'm 26. She's 24. Am I the asshole? I'm a little surprised that this is an everybody sucks here, but I'm I'm because that's what the verdict was here. Can I get um? Can I get the the everybody sucks here in chat voters to tell me how the guy or the girl sucks? Is it as simple as she does sound like she's not goal oriented? She sounds annoying. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't think that's really fair. Like, the only thing I know about her is that she waitresses, which is fine. And then she asked where the party was like six times, according to her boyfriend, which seems like that's probably an oversimplification of who she is as a human being. Especially when, why didn't they just tell her where is the party? Why didn't they just say it's over there? Then she wouldn't have asked it so much. It sounds like she asked him not to see his family anymore. Okay, she, she strongly encouraged me to skip the get-togethers and not talk to them very much, so I haven't seen them since October. All right, okay, I could, I could see your point. Sorry, I got, some, I got some zucchini stuck in my straw. I can't get it out, man. I don't want to get courgette on my, on my pants. I got it out, I got it out. But I got a little on my shirt. I'm the asshole. I'm the asshole. There we go. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't think that they suck. I mean, look. If I look, I know I said look twenty times. I'm formulating my thoughts behind the curtain. Okay. If I was dating someone and I was in love with them, and then I went to see their family, and their family was like uh, shitty to me. I would do the same thing that she's doing because you're building like a bubble where it's you and your significant other as like the, the number one priority. 
And I understand that, you know, they've only been dating for like four months, but I just don't know if that's how the human brain works. I think you're like, you know, we're, we're testing, we're running like a, a test drive to see if we're going to um, be each other's number one heading into final tribal council, okay? So I, I don't think that she's really that off base or out of line by... I mean, if someone was shitty to me, even if they were related to my spouse, like if I went to Kate's parents' house and, you know, they were like, you suck, fuck you, I would be like, don't talk to those people so much anymore. <laughs> Whether or not, you know, it would, she would actually do it, is that's up to her. That's all you could really do in that situation. But like, I don't, I don't see her as doing anything wrong. I feel like he should talk to his parents and be like, can you not condescend to my girlfriend? And then they will probably have a conversation where they're going to be like, oh, we're sorry that we, we didn't realize we were being so elitist. We just were surprised because normally you bring home studious girls. Um, but we support your decision to date whoever you want to date. We just want to make sure that... Um, you know, this is someone who you see yourself with in the future. And then they'll like have a com they'll have like a meal and when their belly's full, they'll be a more amenable to having like a, a realistic sort of negotiation where they'll come to a solution at the end that that works. It's not perfect for everybody, but a compromise that works. Or they would be like, no, you can't date this girl. She's a waitress. And then you would be like, all right, see you later, mom and dad, or something like that. And then so that's, but even then, I think they made the mistake. Like the parents could always reach out and apologize. I'm, I'm inclined to give my stamp on this one. And my stamp is only the parents suck, in my opinion. I think that's it. I'm giving this a not the asshole. Based on my perspective. Am I, no, am I the asshole for no longer playing a video game with my stepson after my own son said it wasn't fair? This is a long one. Oh no, he's a YouTuber. Am I, am I the asshole for no longer playing a video game with my stepson after my own son said it wasn't fair? My ex now moved my now 12-year-old son to another state against my wishes two years ago. I wasn't able to stop the move legally. So now I get my son all of summer and breaks. I'm not happy with the schedule, but there's not much I can do. I live with my wife, 13-year-old stepson, and 3-year-old daughter. My stepson is obsessed with Minecraft and has recently been making videos for YouTube. I love my stepson a lot, and we have a great relationship. He asked me to play Minecraft with him a few times in online multiplayer mode. And the few times that we have, I've done unintentionally funny things that went viral and got his videos some tens of thousands of views. He now has around 12,000 subscribers. Yo, that's kind of sick. That's pretty cool. My son found out about this and also wanted to have a YouTube channel. Apparently, he'd just gotten into Minecraft as well. So I spent under $2,000 on a computer, monitor, and recording equipment and had them delivered to my son's home in the other state. I felt this was only fair because... I can see where the problem starts here. I felt this was only fair because my stepson was using my computer and recording equipment for my old job. Then I also joined in on my son's videos, but I never managed to recreate those viral moments, and that made my son upset. So I tried harder to be funny, only to be told that I was obvious I was pretending. I'm, dude, some days you got it, some days you don't. Some days you, you can't get the content to come out. None of your jokes are landing. And some days, Chib just off the cuff says something like, wasn't Denzel Washington that American president who died? You can't, you can't have it every single day. You got to be kinder to yourself. His videos were only getting like 50 to 100 views with no comments. That's, that's still like, he's 12. That's not that bad. For a 12-year-old especially. Been there? <laughs> Dude, I, for real, like that's, that's still like a hundred people watching the video. That's pretty good. That's, that's like an above average YouTube video, I think. 
it was pretty stressful at this point for me. Yeah, I mean, you're working like six jobs. You got like your own job, then you're a, a collaborator on two YouTube channels. What, when, do you, when are you doing your, your domestic duties, man? I think my son sensed this and basically cut me off from playing with him. He said I ruined the game for him, and then if I play it with my stepson, then he'll know who I love more, which is ridiculous because it's not even a contest. <laughs> I acknowledged how he felt and told my stepson, maybe it's better if I just do my own things in the evenings and not play Minecraft anymore. My stepson was disappointed but understood. I found out later from my wife that he cried and felt I was mad at him. My wife was upset and said she didn't care if I stopped playing the game. She understood why my son felt jealous, but she told me next time not to put her son down to make mine feel better, that it would have been better if I never offered to play it to begin with. I've been feeling terrible ever since and apologize sincerely, but there's emotional distance between both kids and me. Am I the asshole? Um, this just sucks, dude. I'm sorry for you. Seems like a guy who is just trying his best. Well, I mean, if he's an asshole, what would I have done in this situation? Because I feel like Reddit is guilty of, like, in a broad sense, always trying to find the objective King Solomon approach. I would have told my 12-year-old son, who I carry a lot of emotional baggage for because me and my wife got separated and it was toxic and he was in another state and I only see him two months a year, I would have told him that he's being unrealistic and unfair and uh, you know perhaps alienated him for a little while to continue playing with my stepson because that's only fair. I don't think that most people would do that realistically. I think they would try to find like a compromise. I think what you got to do is you got to convince your birth son to be funnier. I think you've got to maybe like, instead of spending 2K on the rig, maybe you could have spent 1500 and then you could have got to spend like $500 on improv classes or something like that so that he could carry the content on his own and then he wouldn't need you to come in and make like viral moments for him. It, you, you need to set him up. You bought him the PC, but you, he hasn't got the firmware downloaded into his mind yet. Do improv classes actually work? Let me answer your question with another question. Can you please give me all your money right now? Because I'm robbing you. Put the money in the bag. What do you mean that's not a bag? It's uh. It's uh, it's a taco. Um, oh, wow, this is such a good taco. Mm -mm. Oh, my tummy hurts. I just vomited a rainbow. End scene. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Holds up spork. I don't know. I just feel like this. I just want to buy this guy like a, a an imperial stout. I feel like he's just he just needs a hug, really. Am I the asshole for defending my friend and saying my wife needs to work on her insecurities? Oh man. <clears throat> These are always good. I've been married to Jessica for 13 years. We have two girls, 12 and 5. Those are weird names, man. Who are you, George Costanza? I have a female friend, Madison, who I've known since before I was with Jessica. This has never caused much of an issue because I met Madison through her ex-husband, who is still one of her best friends, and we usually hang out in a group, so Jessica has never felt jealous or threatened. She doesn't like Madison, though, by the way, due to clashing personalities. She feels Madison and our mutual friend, her ex's wife, Look down on her, but she can't come up with any examples and admits it's just a gut feeling. I don't know who to believe there because other people have told me they felt it was Jessica who hated the other two women. Madison has a glamorous life. She used to work in fashion and married a guy with fuck you money. So my 12-year-old has always been in awe of her. There's too many damn characters, man. This is like a Robert Altman movie. We're on, the, we're on like character nine, paragraph three. I can't follow this. Why is there so much damn context? She used to work in fashion and married a guy with fuck you money, so my 12-year-old has always been in awe of her just due to the clothes and the parties. This annoys Jessica, but we never thought much of it. Jessica is more the girl-next-door type and looks down on Madison for some of her glamour. I just want to have like a, like a, a, a writer's workshop for Reddit. 
Don't give people that are related to you names in your story. I'm trying to cross-reference who's Madison, who's Jessica. I thought for a second here she was married to a woman, but it, she's married to a man with fuck you money. Just write my wife, my friend. It's, it's too much, man. My five-year-old has been having some behavior. Oh, now there's a five-year-old. Okay. The plot thickens. Is there a glossary or something that I can use? Like a, a, a family tree to keep up with this? My five-year-old has been having some behavioral issues lately, so we're working on that, but everyone's a little tense. Madison and her current husband stopped by Saturday after attending some sort of gala fundraiser because he lent me something and needed it back. Madison was dressed up from the gala. Our five-year-old hear the noise, and it woke her up. We have been having a tough day with her behavior. My wife was burnt out. She saw Madison and said, You look like a princess. You are so pretty, and your dresses are so pretty. I wish you were my mom. Kids are ruthless. Okay, we know this. Madison laughed and was like, Aw, thank you, which Jessica thought was insensitive. When they left, she went off about what a bitch Madison was. I thought it would blow over, but she's been pressuring me to distance myself from the friendship. I argued Madison didn't do anything, and it was about a dress, not my wife. But Jessica says it doesn't matter what Madison did. She's my wife, and she's uncomfortable, so that should be my priority. Today she brought it up, and I snapped at her that she needs to work on her insecurity. That's productive. I was waiting for, for the turn to when it would be the guy is the asshole. No one did anything wrong, and I'm entitled to a life and friendships which don't get to be dictated by her insecurities. Obviously, that did not go over well. Oh, man. Okay. So, um, that, this is a, a tough family situation. Madison did not do anything wrong. Maybe... It would have been nice for her to deflect the comment about I wish you were my mom and say, no, I wish I was as pretty as your mom or something like that. Because you are, when you get a compliment that shouldn't have gone to you, you should jeet kundo it in the direction of the person that it should have been given to in the first place, okay? But just because she neglected to do that does not make her the asshole. It would have made her a saint, YTS, you're the saint if she had managed to do that. But she just remains a, a totally neutral party in this situation. The kid was the asshole. Yeah, but they're five. He's five years old. They're going to say things all the time. You can't, I mean, it's, again, it's, if you get mad at something that like a five-year-old kid says, that's more of a reflection on you than it is on the kid. Now, I'll probably get mad at shit that my five-year-old says all the time. It will be a reflection on me. I'll be, you know, stressed out or burned out or tired or whatever. And I'll be like, man, what she said just really kind of pissed me off. But then the next day I'll be like, right, she's five. <laughs> I'm over it, right? I know on Reddit it's like everybody should be just treated as an adult in all situations. But um, regardless, I mean, this guy is just like, I mean, he just, he snapped at his wife is really what it came down to. It doesn't make him like a big asshole to, to snap at your wife in this situation where everybody's stressed out. But it does, it, and maybe this is a fallacy, but it makes you kind of an asshole to a greater extent to snap at your wife, have five minutes to calm down or more, and then still think you're like so in the right that you go to Reddit to try to get like an affirmation that you didn't do anything wrong. That's where I'm like, you should not go to... Anytime you find yourself having an argument with someone close to you in your life and your instinct is like, I'm going to post about it on social media and then, because what do you think is going to happen? Or maybe he thinks he's just going to feel better about it if people say they agree with him. But it's not like he's going to print out the comments and be like, see, 61% of Redditors are on my side when I told the story exactly in a way to make it as flattering for me as possible. Like that's never going to happen. You should just try to get like, you know, 
Take a deep breath, belly breathe a little bit, and then try to work it out when you get a chance. I mean, it's just not a helpful comment to say work on your insecurity. <laughs> it's like, it's non-specific, both with respect to work on and with respect to insecurity. It's not, it's just not helpful. It's, yeah, it's just like when people say do better. Like, are you saying do better? Or are you just like, you want me to feel bad because you disagree with what I'm saying. So you're just trying to make me feel like I'm doing badly. Am I the asshole for not dressing up for my sister's Harry Potter wedding? It's deleted. I would have loved to have read it. I would have loved to have read it. I love the wedding ones, man. Because you know what it is? Every time I read um, the, the wedding posts, it reaffirms for me that... Getting married with only very close family on the second floor of a nice restaurant was exactly the right way to do it. Why are you making this shit so complicated? I mean, you can have a big wedding, don't get me wrong. But like, I was at zero risk of this shit going down. I'm getting married in my backyard next weekend. Yo, meet the parents style. Did Owen Wilson hand carve you a sick altar? I mean, that's just cool. I got married at the corner of Hastings and Maine. Outside. With the lights off. Plus, McDonald's has free refills, so your wedding was goaded. Don't act like you were there. I wouldn't know if you were there, though, because I had the lights off. Um, it's a good joke. It's a good joke. Okay, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> I love this. I didn't want to spend the whole time typing this out, so I'll try to keep it brief. That is a lie. You're here making the post. You can't, it just, do, do, do you have no self-awareness? Your first sentence is already misleading. And let's not even bring up the fact that this is long. But like, I didn't want to waste any time typing this out. So here's my life story. I just don't understand. You, if you don't want to type it, then don't type it. I wouldn't be reading this if you didn't want to type it. My, she's female, 21. Aunt got married last weekend. Pog, clap, congratulations. When I was invited to the wedding, I was told I could take a plus one. Automatically decided I wanted to take my girlfriend, Jay. Chat's going to love that. The invitations were set out an entire six months before the actual wedding. My girlfriend was really exited because this will have only been the second wedding she's gone to in her whole life. Good for her. I remember my second wedding. My family are not the most welcoming of my girlfriend and I's relationship as they are very traditional. But after a few years, have learned to tolerate it. My whole family knew that I planned to take Jay. However, the weekend before the wedding, my mom and I went out to lunch. She told me she wasn't supposed to tell me this, but my aunt had told her she was uncomfortable with me bringing Jay and she wished I'd bring someone else so that she could feel more comfortable. I basically told my mom that was BS and we got into an argument. No, Bixby, that one's not for you. I don't know why Bixby went in on that. Fast forward to the day of the wedding and I bring, I bring Jay just like I said I would. My aunt avoided me the whole time and I kept getting dirty looks from family members. Later at the reception, I was confronted by my aunt and mom who told me it was disrespectful of me to bring my girlfriend to the wedding when I knew she wasn't wanted there and how I could make my aunt uncomfortable at her own wedding. They said, and I quote, I was supposed to do the right thing and not bring Jay once I knew she wasn't wanted there right in front of Jay. Okay, now everyone... We're all heavy in on not the asshole here. All reasonable people are in on not the asshole. There's still like five paragraphs left, and the verdict was everybody sucks from the populace. So I'm waiting for the, the turn of the bloom on the rose. Something's going to, she pisses in the punch bowl. I don't know, but something's going, she's crashing her car into like everybody else in the parking lot or something. Like 
there's going to be a plot twist. It happens every time. It should be soon because she didn't want to spend a whole lot of time typing this out. So from my understanding, my aunt was probably the one who asked my mom to tell me she was uncomfortable with it as it was some elaborate plan to get me to not bring Jay last minute. I told him to suck it and ended up leaving. But Jay, obviously, very upset. I have been since been shunned by my entire immediate family circle, which was very hurtful, but I'm tired of dealing with their shit. Am I the asshole? No, there was no turn. What happened? Why? There's... Okay, no, no, no. I'm looking at the... There, there's a table below. Verdict. 50% not the asshole. 25%. Pardon me. 25% everyone sucks here. That seems more reasonable from Reddit to me. I mean, I also don't think it should be 25%. I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> I think... When you're hosting a wedding, for you, you have to be reasonably accommodating to other people. If someone wants to come dressed as a pirate and you don't want that, I think you could be like, don't be a pirate. Can you just wear like some normie clothes? If someone's going to come on stilts and they love wearing stilts, could you be like, just leave the stilts at home? But asking someone to not bring their girlfriend because you're homophobic to me is like a violation of your human rights. <laughs> it's like asking someone to be like, when you come to my wedding, can you cover my, cover your face? Cause I don't like how you look. Um, when you come to my wedding, uh, please don't wear uh, the cross around your neck. Cause it offends me. Like it's too much. You've gone way too far. Um, you have to live on this world with other people. You have to accommodate things that may offend you or annoy you, but are within the human being's right to, to practice, you know, in the pursuit of their own happiness. So I really can't understand the people that are like, you're the asshole. I don't know if there's people out there, I guess, that oversimplify it as like, well, you knew it would make your aunt angry, so you should... I guess there's, they're probably going to say you shouldn't have gone at all because you subjected your girlfriend to that level of homophobia and that is irresponsible of you. So that there's probably some a little bit of fairness to that interpretation of you're the asshole. But apart from that, I mean I mean this is like a this is like a gimme you're not the asshole. I was going to say everybody sucks here, even if she started crashing her car into the other cars in the parking lot. The reason I didn't want to not bring Jay is because I knew how excited she was to go and I didn't want to disappoint her. And also, no, I did not tell her what my mom said to me because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. That seems justifiable to me. For the people asking why my family doesn't like her, it's because she's a girl and not a boy. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, I, I gleaned that, I suppose. All right. I mean, this seems true, true. That's pretty true. That's pretty reasonable. Anyway, that's React Court.